Hey guys, what's happening? So, just picked this up at a customer site, and they wanted me to fix it, calibrate it. Hasn't been running for a couple of years. Um, it's actually a massive printer. It's a Creality CR10 5S. Yeah, this thing is so big, it won't even fit on my, my bench here. Um, yeah, huge printer. First time I actually ever worked on these. I'll take a look at it. Um, so I want to figure out like if the bed, it's a huge heated bed, I'll show you that, but um, one of the things I want to do is, uh, well, it's, there's something wrong with it. it the filament's printing backwards. Um, well, the extruder is actually going the opposite way, so really there's only two things that could be that problem. It's either it's messed up in firmware, the Marlin firmware, or uh, the, the wire's reversed on the uh, extruder motor here, stepper. But one of the things I want to do is upgrade to a, a BL Touch. So I don't know if this actually has the adapt. I actually, I, right now, I don't even know what kind of main board is in this thing right now. So um, I got to figure that out too. If it's actually an old main board, um, which require like the adapter, but uh, I'll find that out. I'll see what's in the box too. The the, the Creole version of the BL Touch. But yeah, if you're gonna have a printer this big, you know, with a bed this huge, you definitely want uh, auto bed leveling because it'd be a nightmare trying to adjust this thing because it's so far apart. You know, <laughs> trying to get this thing to like you know be straight so um yeah it's also like loose i gotta i gotta i gotta dial this thing in so if you're wondering yeah i fix 3d printers it's like a side side hobby um so I, I work in it that's my, what i mainly do for a living but uh yeah i've been fixing 3d printers here and there you know so i create like a little small website yeah 3d printer repair where i live so get a few calls here and there um i've actually fixed probably like, like 10 different printers um, but, alright, so I'm going to take this apart and figure out what kind of board's in here. Like, he said actually we could upgrade the board too, so, um, yeah, the main thing is the, the servo pins. Like, the newer Creality boards actually have trinamic drivers built into them and a uh, servo pin for the BL Touch. So let me open this up, we'll see what's in it. Alright, so here's the box open, come with a couple zip ties. And one thing I definitely noticed is that this cable... It's different than your normal standard uh, BL touch cable. Because a normal standard BL touch cable would actually have a two two pin wire and a three pin wire, one for servo, one for power. Um, so hopefully the board has this this five pin connector on it. Uh, if not, then I'll have to tell them to get, get a new board. But yeah, it's a ah, man. This is probably about a thousand dollar printer, probably. And they said it hasn't been working for a couple of years. Like the last guy that. Um, work there had messed with it so I'm thinking he might have like dissed him with the firmware and here's the BL touch I'm not sure if this is the latest version or not like I said they said the printer's been sitting around for a while so all right screws all right so I gotta get this board apart box apart and we'll see what kind of main boards on here so here's the board out so you have your hot neutral ground input but I noticed the actual board is a 12 volt What's applying this voltage is 12 volts, this massive uh, bed here. So it's probably going to take forever to heat up. We'll see when we get going. But uh, yeah, it actually has a MOSFET, external MOSFET right there. But it's actually wired into the 12 volt rail. And this is a 12 volt power supply. 30 amp power supply. Um, and yeah, the board is definitely an older board. I can tell it's an 8 bit board because of the actual chip on here. It's a 2560 mega, I think. Hard to read here. Yeah, I think it's a 202560 mega. Um, so it's 8-bit boards. So I'm going to try to upgrade the board. Just because you're not going to be able to, like, it, the problem with these these older chips is that they don't have enough room for storage for the new versions of, like, Marlin 2.0. Plus, like I said, it would be a nightmare to try to, to wire in this BL Touch. And a printer this big, you need to have a, some kind of auto bed leveling stuff in the system. Like, there's just too much room with the adjusters. To, to make it work right. I mean, it would be a super difficult to make it even, you know, a bed that board or bed that big. Um, all right, so next thing, I'm gonna upgrade this board. Then let the customer know that this is an old board. All right, so it's been a couple days. Uh, so the customer sent me um, some new standoffs. So I'm gonna convert this over to the, uh, to the springs right there. So the springs are creating an insane amount of wobble. So I'm going to convert that to a fixed bed because we're going to auto bed leveling sensor. That. And at the same time, this is an old 8-bit board. So 
I, uh, he went and got a, uh, this is an SKR uh, E3 Mini. It's supposed to be a direct replacement for Creality. And this actually has the uh, Trinamic 2209 driver, so I'm going to custom build a firmware for him on uh, Marlin 2.0. And so it will have the latest features and he'll be able to upgrade in the future. So, alright, so i got to pull that out. i got to build the firmware tonight. We'll get it going. Alright, so if you're installing this board, you need to move the, uh, originally this thing actually came with the EXP1, EXP2. So you need to move it to EXP3. So if you have the single single cable output, it needs to be on EXP3. So here are some uh, solid, it looks like a rubber. Um, six pieces. This is four to make this ridge, but I don't like the fact that it's kind of rubber though. I can throw it off, so I already took a couple screws off. Just going to replace that spring with a piece of rubber. I just don't like the idea of the rubber because when you're, when you're cranking down on it, because it's not rigid, um, it could distort. So, I'm going to put my aluminum ones on there. But another thing too is, uh, this bed is so heavy, and this is a gigantic bed, this is the biggest printer they make, um, that it might put too much pressure on this rubber, so I don't want, want a rubber. Make it solid. I'm not sure if you can see in there or not, but... Um... Yeah, it went from totally wobbly to totally stable. Yeah, that was horrible. You know, on the springs, it was just like... Yeah, I mean, especially with this large bed on the jerk, you know? I mean, man, that's been a horrible print on this thing. Alright, so now I got the BL touch on. I can fish down. Uh, before I put this totally back together, I'm going to recompile Marlin. Um, one of the issues I don't like about this board, it seems like there's no place to hook these fans up. Like, there's a spot for... Uh, Actually, they're, they're uh, controlled by the actual controller chip, so you can program a Marlin. The fan and the park, or the layer cooling fan and the, and the cooling fan. But now I need to hook up these boards, because these Tridynamic drivers are going to be running hotter. So, got to find a way to get these fans power. I mean, I could run it right there. But, I mean, that's supposedly what they say that's for, is the extruder fan, but... Alright, so just doing some final checks, heated bed works, got to put the case back together, got the uh, BL touch to work, I'll go probably more into the Marlin config so you can see what I, what I did. Um, it's a little bit different because I'm actually running the 5 pin connector. So there's two different ways you can actually terminate your Z. So you can either use a uh, Z switch, the actual like the 2 pin Z switch, or because this thing actually had a 5 pin connector, I had to actually modify Marlin to use the uh, extra uh, pin assigned to that 5 pin connector so it's a different it's not your normal like a Z stop so I'll show you that in Marlin alright so another issue you're going to run into is the actual fan situation so you basically have one uh, you have the uh, layer cooling fan and you also have the uh, main fan which cools the actual extruder uh, these are actually controlled by uh, pins on the actual board that connect to the processor that which you can program uh, that's why it actually shuts off so when this thing is not in use the cooling fan will shut off but I have another issue is that you need to have the cooling fans here to cool off the, 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 the drivers. So I'm just going to splice those, and there's actually a power output right here. Um, I can either splice that into the main power, uh, or just right here on this output right here. A few bugs to work out, but it's actually putting right here. So I usually mark where the actually, when I first forgot the thing, where the actual, it's probing, the uh, BL touch. And on the Z offset, it was 3.8. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to spin, uh, print small parts, this is definitely the printer. You don't want to print this printer. <laughs> it's only good for big parts because this is, it's going to be really hard to control ghosting on a printer this big. There's so much uh, this, this, so much weight to this Y-axis. Alright, so let's just go. And this is the first print. And then I need to... Uh, I, I use baby zapping to get the uh, Z offset. Then I'll go back and I'll create that in G-code. My uh, M851 command. On these uh, frame style printers, you definitely need some sort of like Z support. Um, I actually have it on this machine right here. See that back rail comes back down? Um, yeah, because look at all the movement up there. I mean, you can just see what this thing's doing. But this actually <laughs> exacerbates it by having to spool up there, so it definitely needs to be, you need to have some kind of support. Especially on a printer this big. I mean, look how big this thing is. It doesn't even fit on my desk. 
Yeah, you really want to control that movement because what it does is it just basically creates artifacts in your print. I mean, this whole thing is moving around. So you're basically uh, creating artifacts on the actual print. Alright, so that's the first print there. I mean, lots of ghosting, but... I mean, this is actually kind of reflective, so it kind of amplifies it. You can see the ghosting in the Y. Ghost in the X is obviously better. I mean, you have this huge Y axis. Um, so I'm going to suggest the customer print out some supports for the uh, Z right here. Z support brackets. And, um, you know, there's a lot of movement just in this huge bed, you know. The, the wiggling. So, um, all right, I'll go, I'll go and I'll show you the Marlin settings. And then, uh, you know, if you're actually in Orange County and you want your 3D printer fixed, I'll put my number down below or upgrade or whatever. So, all right. Alright guys, let me show you the Marlin config real quick. Um, so this right here is... You have to uh, comment out this line where it says define Z-min probe uses uh, Z-min end stop. So if you actually were using this, then you'd actually want to have the BL touch connected to your Z end stop. Uh, but because I have that 5-pin connector, I had to connect it to uh, this other pin, so I had to comment that out. Then I had to uh, enable this feature right here. Uh, define Z probe for Z homing, and then I went one step further and I defined the pin right there, which says PC14. So if you look at this picture right here on the pinout, PC14, that's the last pin on that five pin connector, and this actually is the end stop. So this actually one provides the uh, functionality, the PP9, for the you know deployment of, of the uh, and uh, stowaway of that little probe, and the uh, uh, port PC14 is the uh, for the end stop. All right, and another thing too is the fan. I mean, from here, I, I, I guess, I'm sorry. Besides that, I can actually, you can either go PC14 or you go to the common config or I could copy this right here. I just decided to just go straight on the pin number. And then there is another. All right, so another issue you might have with this board is controlling this fan. So if you look at this diagram, the pinout, you see uh, PC7 and PC6. That controls the fans. So from here, you could control the, the layer fan or also like uh, the uh, the hot end cooling fan. So what you can do is just copy this right here. And I had to enable this. And it was sort of like a uh, time delay. So I'm going to go back to configuration advance, do a search. And there you go, define. So you have to use define, use USB or use controller fan. So without that enabled, the fan wouldn't turn on, the uh, extruder cooling fan or the hot end cooling fan. So just a few issues I had to go through, uh, the BL touch pin stuff and this thing. And besides that, it was just a basic configuration, you know, for a, um, I don't work on a lot of CR10 5Ss, so it's pretty rare to even see those things. And actually to tell you the truth, I wouldn't want to print on it if I didn't have to, because it's such a big printer that it's just hard to control the ghosting because the, the bed is so big that the Y axis is so big. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't buy one of those for my main printer. I would only get it just for super crazy large prints. Um, all right, yeah, it was 510 by 510 was the uh, the bed. So basic configuration. I copied like most of the configuration from the uh, Marlin 1.0 configuration, like for the uh, BL Touch. I don't know, no, not for the BL Touch, but for the uh, stock uh, Creality. So I just copied a lot of the uh, stuff over, like uh, steps and that kind of stuff, but. Hope this video helps somebody. Uh, really cool motherboard. Uh, I've already installed it back at the customer site. Works fine. Um, super quiet. So they're, they're happy with it. So, all right, guys. So if you need some 3D repair, repair give me a call. My phone number is down below. Let me know. All right. Thanks.